Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, February 3, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and live via streaming worldwide through UNTV News and Rescue Facebook account and UNTVweb.com. I am William Theo. And here are the headlines. Eight persons who came in close contact with a Chinese couple found positive for the novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease have shown flu-like symptoms and are now being strictly monitored. The health department records 80 patients under investigation. The novel coronavirus outbreak death toll rises to 361 as the first fatality of the deadly virus outside of China is recorded in the Philippines. The Philippine National Police activates a health team to assist in containing the spread of the novel coronavirus acute respiratory syndrome. Hundreds of Chinese nationals are left stranded in Naia as the Philippine government suspends travel to China and two of its special administrative regions. A town in Davao Occidental declares a state of calamity amid the outbreak of African swine fever in the area. And two-time champion Judiciary Magis completes a semi-finals list of the UNTV Cup Season 8. The Department of Health reports the Philippines' first fatality case due to the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease. Let us unfold the order of event events which led to the first 2019 NCOV fatality in the country. Vincent Arboleda reports. The first 2019 novel coronavirus fatality outside China has been recorded in the Philippines. It was the case of a 44-year-old male Chinese citizen from Wuhan City, Hubei, China, who succumbed to the disease while having a vacation in the Philippines. According to the Department of Health, the male Chinese and his partner, a 38-year-old Chinese woman, arrived in the Philippines on January 21. They took Cebu Pacific Flight 5J241 from Hong Kong to Cebu and then Flight DG6519 from Cebu to Dumaguete. On January 25, the two flew from Dumaguete to Metro Manila via Philippine Airlines Flight PR2542. On that same day, the two went to San Lazaro Hospital after showing symptoms of coronavirus. On January 30, the DOH announced to the public the country's first 2019 NCOV ARD case, which is that of the same 38-year-old female Chinese. Hindi siya tinest kasabay ng first confirmed case. Yung pinadala sa Australia na anim noon kasama yung dun sa babae. Hindi kasama yung sa lalaki. Yung sa lalaki tinest dito sa RITM. Pagka-setup ng labs natin. Since the male Chinese came with the Chinese woman, the agency says there was a huge possibility the male was also positive for 2019 NCOV ARD. Yung index of suspicion mataas. Kaya yung management is the same as for real NCOV pneumonia. That was already our assumption. The Department of Health set up a testing facility for 2019 NCOV with RIDM and conducted examinations on the other persons under investigation, including the 44-year-old Chinese male. A day after the confirmation of the first case of 2019 NCOV in the country, President Rodrigo Duterte issued a travel ban to China and its administrative regions. On February 2, the Health Department revealed to the public the first case of death due to the 2019 NCOV ARD in the Philippines. This is also the first fatality case outside China. According to the agency, the male Chinese died on February 1. Results showed that he also contracted Haemophilus influenza type B and Streptococcus pneumoniae. The DOH Epidemiology Bureau continues to monitor and trace those who may have interacted with the diseased Chinese national. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila.
The Department of Health says no Filipino is recorded to have been transmitted with a 2019 novel coronavirus. This, although the first 2019 NCOV related death outside China is listed in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel details why. There are now 80 patients under investigation or PUI recorded by the health department due to the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease or 2019 NCOV ARD in the Philippines. 67 of them are currently isolated in health facilities in different regions in the country. 10 have been discharged and one had expired or died due to human immunodeficiency virus or HIV but tested negative for the 2019 NCOV ARD. Despite an increasing number of suspected cases of NCOV in the country, the Health Department and the World Health Organization reiterate there is no local transmission of the new strain of coronavirus in the Philippines. The one, two are imported cases. And the one who died is a statistics for China. Okay, that's not for us because ours, zero local transmission. We want to reiterate that there is no evidence of any local transmission in the Philippines or among Filipinos at this point of time. The only two positives that we have identified here in the Philippines were among the two travelers who came from Wuhan. The DOH has advised the PUIs that have been discharged to avoid coming in close contact with people. Yung mga pinauwi ng sampo, although we are encouraging them to still be conscious ng kanilang kalusugan, pero sila po ay na-clear na at ang base sa kanilang laboratorio, negatibo sila sa NCOV. Meanwhile, the DOH clarifies there was no delay in the release of the confirmatory test of the first 2019 NCOV-related death outside China, which has been listed in the Philippines. It's a mixed infection, mixed pathogens. So it will be very difficult which among the three, uh, but uh, still we would say that the severe pneumonia must have been caused by the corona and COVID because of the clinical uh, and some diagnostics that show similarity between uh, the sars cov and the uh, and cov the DOH implements a strict protocol on case management and burying the cadaver of the person who died of NCOV. Dispose, bury, or dispose otherwise the body as soon as possible. At sa ngayon, ang ating, ang hinahandle pa rin natin, of course, as potentially infectious yung, ano, yung cadaver and being treated with care. And of course, the cremation will be done as soon as possible. Based on the contact tracing done by the Department of Health, it appears that 8 of the 74 who had contact with the two positive cases of 29 NCOV ARD manifest symptoms of coronavirus infection. Based on the Health Department's update, 30 of the PUIs tested negative for the 2019 NCOV ARD, while 48 results are yet to be released. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth for its part has approved a benefit package for its members who will be considered as patients under investigation. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Philippine National Police repairs more than 100 police personnel should the Health Department seek assistance in the fight against the 2019 novel coronavirus. Police will also assist in monitoring businesses that hoard or increase the prices of face masks amid the 2019 NCOV issue. Lea Ilagan reports why. The Department of Health or DOH is yet to ask for PNP's assistance in the fight against the 2019 novel coronavirus or NCOV. But PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa says they have prepared 105 personnel trained in chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and high-yield explosives or CBRNE. Gamboa says this policeman will be placed in the front line should a DOH ask for assistance in tracing suspected NCOV carriers and put them in quarantine. Tutulong ang PNP but we're just presenting na meron kaming ganitong pwersa whom they can use. No? Actually, hindi naman to talaga pang ganitong emergency na may, may sakit. Ano? But this is for chemical warfare. But equally, uh, they are protected. No? So they can be used. Nilalatag lang namin na meron kaming capability na ganito and ready to be deployed at any time. 
Gamboa adds this policeman will be provided with masks and complete hazard material suit or hazmat suit. Meanwhile, the PNP chief orders the Director of National Support Unit, the Regional Directors and Unit Commanders to provide rubbing alcohol in their offices, wash their hands, take vitamins. Imagine a face mask would only last for 8 hours, no? Eh kung lahat ng pulis pagamitin natin, that's 205 and that's every day, no? So you you can imagine the cost of it, no? So we're also in touch with the available resources that we have. Kaya um, ang directive ko is that only when it is, it is necessary, especially pag uh, Yung places of convergence nga. The PNP is also considering to enforce a lockdown on training facilities, including the Philippine National Police Academy or PNPA, the National Police Training Institute or NPTI, and the Regional Training Service for the safety and protection of cadets and trainees. The PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group and local police will help the Department of Trade and Industry and local government units in monitoring the prices and hoarding of face masks. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue Camp Krame. The Metro Manila local government units are now on alert to prevent the possible spread of the 2019 new coronavirus acute respiratory disease. Find out the various measures the local governments are taking to protect the citizens from the said disease. Joa Nano tells us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA called a meeting today with the local Disaster Response and Management Council in Metro Manila to present various measures against the 2019 NCOV ARD. This is to assure that all cities in Metro Manila are prepared to combat the possible spread of the disease. In Quezon City, the local chief of disease surveillance unit assures that hospitals, facilities, and health workers in the city are prepared to treat patients with symptoms of NCOV. Now we have oriented more than 40 hospitals in Quezon City, private and uh, public hospitals, on the uh, triaging system ng, ng Department of Health. Uh, alam nila pa paano i, kung kailangan i-conduct ang pasyente o i-transfer yung pasyente to a DOH hospital, uh, ready na po tayo para doon. In Paranaque City, the local health department is strictly monitoring all Philippine offshore gaming operators or POGOs and hotels operating in the city where several Chinese nationals are working or just visiting. According to Dr. Olga Virtuso, the Paranaque City Health Department head, they are regularly conducting sanitation inspection in POGO establishments. With this event, we will make sure also that these different hotels should have also uh, uh, sanitation from the entrance of their hotel as well as the immediate uh, vicinity. The Pasig City Health Department is searching for an individual who is said to have symptoms of the 2019 NCOV ARD but refused to admit himself in a hospital. Once the authorities are able to trace person but in turn declines to be admitted in a hospital, the city health officials have no choice but ask assistance from the Pasig City Police. We'll talk to the hospital and we'll confirm it. Tapos, uh, if ever na na kailangan puntahan siya para ma-verify and kung nag-manifest nag talaga siya ng apat for co na confirmed na, we will use the PNP. Various local government units admit the unavailability of face masks is one of the challenge amid the 2019 NCOV outbreak. As of now, they have no choice but to limit the distribution of face masks among their health workers who are frontliners in treating patients with symptoms of the virus. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government says it is the discretion of the local chief executives whether to suspend classes in their cities amid threats of the yet undetermined coronavirus. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Meanwhile, hundreds of hospital workers in Hong Kong have gone on strike demanding the border with mainline China be completely closed as the confirmed cases from the deadly coronavirus outbreak rose to 17,000 with at least 361 fatalities. Kath Dumaraos has this story. 
China's National Health Commission said there were 57 new fatalities on Sunday, all but one of them in Hubei province, which has been effectively sealed off from the rest of the country for more than a week. The total of deaths nationwide was at least 361, with 17,205 people across the country infected with the virus after 2,829 new cases were reported. Other countries have rushed to evacuate their citizens from Wuhan and Hubei, while many have also imposed extraordinary travel restrictions on travelers to and from China. About 150 cases have been reported in two dozen other countries. China has completed building a 1,000-bed hospital for treating patients of the new coronavirus in just 10 days. A second hospital with 1,500 beds is under construction. Meanwhile, health workers in Hong Kong went on strike on Monday amid growing discontent over the government's handling of the coronavirus outbreak. The strike was originally announced by the Health Workers Union Hospital Authority Employees Alliance or HAEA. At least 6,500 members, mostly health workers, are expected to participate. Um, because we have five demands given to the government and hope that uh, these strikes will make the government respond to our five demands um, to um, most importantly to stop the spread of coronavirus in Hong Kong. The five demands of the HAEA are for the government to fully close the border with the mainland, facilitate the proper distribution of masks among the public, ensure that frontline medical workers have adequate supplies and protection, provide enough isolation wards for patients, and that the strike would result in no negative reprisals against medical staff. HAEA have vowed to continue the strike if their demands are not met. Meanwhile, California health officials said they had confirmed 11 cases of the new fast-spreading coronavirus in the United States, with one in Santa Clara County and two more in San Benito County. In Santa Clara County, a woman and the family she is staying with are being quarantined, and she is now in isolation at their home. The woman was not sick enough to require hospitalization, it added. The other two cases involve a married couple in San Benito County. There's been some question at this point whether people who are not symptomatic but infected can spread this even before they develop symptoms. We don't know the answer to that. The CDC is looking into that and trying to figure out with the information and research they're doing whether indeed you can spread it. We don't know the answer to that. Kat Dumara, OSU and TV News and Rescue. Various social media sites plan action to fight the spread of fake news about the 2019 novel coronavirus. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau condemns discrimination and racism towards the coronavirus. Let's know more about this with Marie Peñaranda and Noel Poliak. Mixed emotions arise in America as fake news about the novel coronavirus spread. A week ago, a news station reported that there was a possible confirmed coronavirus outbreak in Carson, California. Health officials in the area immediately released a statement stating that the information was not true and that the public should be careful as false information is rapidly spreading. These have upset some of the Filipinos in the U.S. We don't know which one is true, which we don't know which one is false. So. Just a while ago, Facebook has been proactive in taking down contents with false claims and conspiracy theories and has planned to provide the public with helpful information. The social media and technology company has been using fact checkers to stop the spread of false claims and false information and to focus on false cures and treatment. Twitter has also released a Know the Facts prompt that pops up whenever users search about the coronavirus on Twitter. Last Friday, White House announced the travel restrictions on foreign nationals that visited China within the last 14 days. Returning American citizens that are potentially at risk are placed in quarantine. These are all according to the declaration of the Trump administration on the public health emergency. Canadians on social media are in dismay due to the slow reactions of the Canadian government to the fight against the 2019 novel coronavirus. Severe criticism have reigned over the Prime Minister's Twitter account as many are expressing their opinions about the government. 
In total, there are four confirmed cases of the 2019 NCOV in Canada and more than five in the US. The latest case confirmed by the Ontario health officials is of a woman who came from Wuhan City, China to London City, Ontario last January 23. According to officials, the woman followed all procedures and kept a limited contact to people. She quickly recovered but remains in self-isolation in her home. Meanwhile, this past week, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau condemned all discrimination and racism that have arisen from fear and misinformation about the spread of the Wuhan coronavirus. Canada has been continuously helping China in repatriating Canadians that are in China. The risk of catching the deadly coronavirus has remained low among Canadians. The government keeps close contact with the World Health Organization. Noel Poliarco, UNTV, News and Rescue, Toronto, Canada. Welcome back to Y News. Filipino citizens are no longer allowed to travel to China unless they have dual citizenship. While travelers coming from China are not allowed to enter the Philippines, the Presidential Communications Operations Office says this is a temporary ban. Rosalie Cos details why. Regardless of their nationality, the entry to the Philippines of travelers with flights or trips originating from China and its special administrative region Macau and Hong Kong is banned. This comes after the World Health Organization declared a global emergency due to the rapid spread of 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease as well as two confirmed cases of the virus in the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte approved such recommendation of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has ordered temporarily banning the entry of any person regardless of nationality except Filipino citizens and holders of permanent resident visa issued by the Philippine government, directly coming from China and its special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. If any Filipino has been to mainland China and its special administrative regions, he or she needs to undergo a 14-day quarantine. Filipino citizens are not allowed to travel to China unless they have dual citizenship. If any Filipino needs to undergo or has a schedule of medical surgery in the said countries, he or she has to seek certification from the Department of Health. President Duterte has also directed the establishment of a repatriation and quarantine facility. All heads of departments, agencies, offices and instrumentalities of the government and local government units are ordered to adopt coordinate and implement the guidelines which the task force may issue until the threat of the 2019 NCOV ARD in the country is over. The President has also directed the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police and other law enforcement agencies to give the necessary assistance to ensure the implementation and the safety and well-being of everyone. The palace reiterates the importance of personal hygiene such as regular hand washing and proper cough etiquette. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacania. With the ongoing threat of the 2019 NCOV acute respiratory disease, the government has imposed a temporary travel ban to and from China, Macau, and Hong Kong. However, some Chinese nationals and even overseas Filipino workers are left stranded. Arlene Delgado explains why. Salonga may have to stay in the Philippines longer than he had expected. An overseas Filipino worker for over two decades, Rami was about to depart for Hong Kong yesterday after his 10-day vacation in the Philippines when immigration officers told him that his flight has been cancelled due to the imposed travel ban amid the threat of the 2019 NCOV ARD. Oh, hey. Eh, sabi ko nga, paano ba yan? Sabi ko, eh, siyempre, hindi, hindi, hindi mo alam paano yung sasabihin mo sa, sa boss ko. Hindi ko alam kung baka maya, pagbalik ko doon, wala na rin akong trabaho, pagkaganya. In Naia Terminal 1, some Chinese passengers were waiting at the departure area today, hoping to fly back to China. Hong Ni Guo was patiently waiting together with her family for a Chinese airline company to open its flights to China after their flight had been cancelled twice. 
She says she never expected the turn of events, as they are in the Philippines only for a vacation and for the first time. I'm with my two kids and husband. It's very difficult here. And our flight was cancelled. We really want to go back home. According to the Bureau of Immigration, 300 Chinese nationals are now stranded because of the travel ban. 137 of them are at Naia terminals. The Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated has provided boxes of bottled water and biscuits for the affected Chinese passengers. The BI says the Chinese embassy has pledged to provide aircraft to transport the stranded Chinese passengers to China. Our office is coordinating with uh, uh, the Chinese embassy and they have pledged to, to send an aircraft to fetch their uh, citizens who are uh, stranded in the country. And um, maybe today or in the next few days, we'll find out the details of these flights that the Chinese embassy will be arranging. Meanwhile, Labor Secretary Sylvester Abelio III says the Department of Labor and Employment will provide assistance and flight accommodations to OFWs affected by the ban. Ready naman ang dole, lalo lalo na ang OWA, na magbigay ng financial assistance sa mga inabutan ng ban. 10,000 yan, they can be provided temporary shelter doon sa halfway house ng OWA. For OFWs affected by the ban, directly coordinates with Overseas Workers Welfare Administration assistance officers in airports. Visit the OWA headquarters in Pasay City or call the OWA hotline 1348. Horlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Manila Police District clarifies that the foreign national that collapsed as seen on a viral video is not a carrier of the 2019 novel coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Department of Health has a piece of advice to the public if such an incident occurs. Bernard Dadis details why. A video of a man asking for help went viral on social media this weekend. The video shows an unconscious foreign national near the corner of Remedio Street in Ermita, Manila City on Saturday afternoon. The man can be heard calling for help from people around him but to no avail. Halos wala pong kakatugon sa hiling po namin na makuha po sana yung Chinese national na yan. Baka po pastibo po siya sa end of career. Ayan po siya. Makikisuyo na lang po sana kami sa kinahukulat. According to a statement released on Sunday by the Manila Police District, the foreigner went to the police station to clarify that he is not a 2019 novel coronavirus patient and explained that he collapsed due to alcohol intoxication. The Department of Health advised the public that in case they encounter an incident of a suspected 2019 NCOV carrier collapsing, they should report it immediately to the police. Kasi yung police nag roving sila eh. So after the police, tatawag yan uh, sa pinakamalapit na local government hospital, sa emergency room. Oh, ay, meron tayo dito ang emergency. Pagpadala kayo ng uh, ambulance at uh, pwede bang uh, uh, dalhin sa ER ngayon. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. A Filipino-Chinese group calls to stop discrimination of Chinese nationals amid the spread of the 2019 and COVID. Meanwhile, the Department of Health seeks help from a Filipino-Chinese chamber in providing Chinese language interpreters in hospitals. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. A group of Filipino-Chinese community demands to see xenophobia or fear and dislike of Chinese people, overseas Chinese, their sentiments, or Chinese culture. According to the founding president of Kaisa Para Sa Kaunlaran Incorporated, Teresita Ang Si, Chinese people are being blamed for the spread of the 2019 NCOV acute respiratory disease. She explains the Chinese community has been helping Filipinos in calamities and times of hardships. Now it is the Filipinos' turn to show sympathy and support to them while they bear a heavy burden. Mas deadly pa sa coronavirus yung nangyayaring discrimination at xenophobia. Yung China bashing, Chinese bashing, tapos ilalahat mo. Ay, paano kung yung Pinoy ay maputi at singkit? 
kababayan mo pala, tapos uh, kung ibuli mo, di ba? But the president of the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated, Henry Lim Bon Leong, believes the discrimination may not be against Chinese, but rather against the virus. Uh, there's one, uh, one uh, media man who asked me that some Grab taxi doesn't want to ano, diba, take in mga Chinese-looking passengers. So because siguro hindi naman discrimination Chinese, uh, dahil because Chinese sila, dahil because the virus originated from China, so they just want to protect themselves. Ayaw nilang may pasahero na mga hawa daw sila. Meanwhile, some doctors encourage people who have traveled from China to quarantine themselves for two weeks, especially if they have symptoms of the disease. But the Department of Health seeks help from the members of the Filipino Chinese Chamber, including doctors and stakeholders, to provide Chinese language interpreters to address the communication problem between hospital personnel and Chinese patients. Siyempre yung pasyente natin na dumarating sa mga ospital natin, karamihan sa kanila from mainland China at nagkakaroon tayo ng konting hirap no, sa pag-communicate with them. So ito yung isang possible na baka maaari nila tayong tulungan sa mga translator. The DOH warns doctors and hospitals about refusing to admit in their facility any patient, especially Chinese nationals, as authorities may forfeit their licenses for such offense. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte meets with various government agencies today. Malacanang, meanwhile, appealed to the public to stop spreading rumors related to the 2019 novel coronavirus. Rosalie Koss explains why. Malacanang stands firm that President Rodrigo Duterte's meeting today with various government agencies on the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease or NCOV-ARD is timely. The chief executive called the meeting four days after the World Health Organization confirmed the first case of the 2019 NCOV-ARD in the country and a day after the first NCOV-related death outside China. Uh, the yung, yung decision naman ng gobyerno ay uh, very... Uh, methodical at yung uh, meeting mamaya ay nataunan din uh, na timely because nung weekend namatay yung uh, yung uh, pasyente na galing pan China the palace official appeals to the public to refrain from discriminating and politicking and to stop sowing division among Filipinos so we urge the public to stop spreading rumors and goading fears as well as ending the stigma against specific nationality or race. There is no room for discrimination and there should be none at all. Let us set aside our individual differences as we ask for a moratorium to people who want to hijack this situation and reduce it to mere pol politicking because lives are at stake. According to the World Health Organization, it is satisfied with how the Philippine government handles the situation in relation to the deadly virus. The WHO representative in the country also believes that the 2019 NCOV outbreak in China can be controlled and the spread of the virus can be stopped. We are satisfied so far with the measures being implemented by the government of the Philippines and uh, we are continuing to work with them to increase their preparedness in case there are further importations or there is evidence of local transmission. As I mentioned earlier, at this point of time, there are no reports of any confirmed local transmission. Meanwhile, Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or RITM appeals to the public to refrain from using surgical masks if not infected with any respiratory syndrome. Let us reserve our masks to those who need them. Uh, I have seen many people wearing masks and uh, please think of whether uh, this mask, use of these masks are indicated because now there is a current shortage of this uh, valuable commodity and let us give them to those who need them most, especially the health worker. Rosalie Coz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. There have been questions whether the 2019 and COVID can be transmitted from asymptomatic patients. The World Health Organization says such case is rare. Dante Amento tells us why. 
Being asymptomatic of the 2019 novel coronavirus infection is rare, even with other coronaviruses such as MERS-CoV and SARS-CoV. According to the World Health Organization, current data show the main driver of the 2019 NCOV infection is symptomatic cases, particularly coughing or sneezing. This is the agency's response to the query of whether the disease can be transmitted from an asymptomatic person. In a report, an asymptomatic woman from China infected a German businessman. Days after, three co-workers of the businessman tested positive for the virus. Meanwhile, based on the protocol being implemented by the Philippines Health Department, individuals who show no signs and symptoms will not undergo quarantine even if they are from countries with confirmed 2019 NCOV cases. Although we are uh, encouraging them to still be conscious ng kanilang kalusugan, pero sila po ay na-clear na at ang base sa kanilang laboratorio, negatibo sila sa NCOV. And symptomatic persons who have tested negative twice will also be allowed to leave, such as patient under investigation. Hanggat hindi na satisfy yung two negative uh, test results, Saka lang natin siya pwedeng uh, paalisin. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Why News continues. The town of Don Marcelino in Davao Occidental is now in a state of calamity. Quarantine checkpoints on entry and exit points were immediately established in the province. Marisol Montaño reports why. The Department of Agriculture confirms African swine fever cases in Mindanao. Based on a memorandum issued by the local government of Don Marcelino, eight barangays in the municipality have recorded death of pigs due to African swine fever or ASF. These are barangays Lindasan, North Lamidan, South Lamidan, Kalian, Mabuhay, Dawa, Nueva Villa, and Baluntayan. The Regional Animal Disease Task Force has been activated to ensure other pigs will not be infected. Due to this, Don Marcelino has declared a state of calamity. Based on initial investigation, it is possible that meat infected with ASF virus coming from Luzon entered the town and then was eaten by local swines. Don Marcelino is now on lockdown. The entry and sale of pork and processed meat are prohibited. Yesterday, Agricultural Secretary William Dar inspected a quarantine checkpoint in Tuluk Davao del Sur to ensure the disease will not enter nearby municipalities. Marisol Montano, UNTV News and Rescue, Davao City. The Department of Agriculture is investigating how the African swine fever virus got transmitted to Davao Occidental. Smuggling and traders who still buy infected hogs are being looked into. Ray Pelayo? Tells us why. The Department of Agriculture is puzzled how the African swine fever or ASF virus entered the town of Don Marcelino in Davao Occidental. Agriculture Secretary William Dar says the province is isolated so they are now investigating some theories on how the virus was transmitted. If you know Davao Occidental, it's uh, such in an isolated uh, coastal area. You cannot understand why the virus uh, proceeded there or was. So the theories are being investigated. Data show there are around 13,000 hogs in Don Marcelino. About a thousand had been caught due to ASF virus infection. Dar says the provincial government will buy the hogs that are not infected in order to avoid the spread of the disease. Aside from Don Marcelino, the town of Malita, which is just nearby, is also under the DA's monitoring. Kung hindi maganda ang pagka depopulate, the chances of the virus escaping from that ground zero to new outbreak areas within Don Marcelino will be there. The DA has recorded around 200,000 hogs have been called in Luzon to prevent the spread of the virus. The department identifies the smuggling as one of the main reasons why ASF continues to spread. There are also sites traders who still buy infected pigs and even the non-reporting of hog racers. Ang Pilipino masyadong smart. Mag-declare ng iba't ibang uh, products hindi naman palang tomato paste or vermicelli. Ganun po, that's the trend. It continues up until today. Nasa loob-looban yung karning baboy, pork uh, products and the like. 
The DA will pay 5,000 pesos for every culled hog within the 1 km radius from ground zero. Hog racers may also loan 30,000 pesos to help them recover. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Authorities confiscated cell phones inside the new Belibid prison maximum security compound believed to have been used in illegal drugs transactions. But the mobile phones must be examined to determine so. Sherwin Kulubong will tell us why. Personnel from the National Capital Region Police Office, Bureau of Corrections, and other security agencies conducted inspection inside the 9-hectare maximum security compound of the new Bilibid prison early today through Operation Greyhound. The 5,300 Metro Manila policemen and others failed to confiscate illegal drugs such as shabu, but they were able to discover dried marijuana leaves kept inside a plastic container. Aside from these are various contraband such as bladed weapons and other sharp objects, electric pans, television sets, speakers and other electronic devices. Authorities were also able to unearth seven units of cellular phones placed inside a drum and buried. Authorities say it is possible that high-value inmates use the phones for their drug transactions. Walang shabu eh. May nagtimpre siguro, mayroon ding natapos. Palagi natin, uh, uh, ang notion is nasa NBP yung facilitators ng uh, movement ng shabu. Palagi nagdududa, haka-haka, uh, ano yan, findings, etc. So kaya namin ito ginagawa. No? So may iba, at least hindi lang natin ma matimingan. So sa katagalan siguro, matatimingan din namin yan. The confiscated cell phones will be examined at the crime laboratory to find out if they had been used in illegal drugs transactions. There are more than 19,000 inmates in the maximum security compound, so the NCRPO used its Sky Patrol, which was exclusively shot by UNTB. Maybe nga, baka nga na, na, na alarmahan sila. So sa mga ganitong kalaking operations naman kasi, mahirap to itago eh. No? And, uh, ang amin lang, is at least, uh, there's always good to that, at least na-disrupt namin yung, yung normal cost nila. Bucor and the NCRPO assure they will conduct Greyhound operation in Bilibid more frequently to achieve the objective of eradicating illegal drug activities inside and outside prison facilities. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. And for the news abroad, here's R.L. Kamiya reporting live from Takatsuka, Japan. R.L., good evening. Good evening, William. A man released from prison after serving time for terrorism-related offenses, strapped on a fake bomb and stabbed two people on a busy London street Sunday before being shot to death by police. Javik Bermas details why. This was a video captured by an eyewitness on a busy South London street on Sunday, showing a police officer pointing a gun towards a seemingly lifeless body on the pavement. Police said the man they had shot had been pronounced dead. London police named the man as 20-year-old Sudesh Amen, the attacker responsible for stabbing two people in the Streatham area of South London. The officers saw that a device was strapped to his body and called in specialist explosive officers and armed officers to deal with the potential threat that posed. Cordons were put in place and it was quickly established that this was a hoax device. Amon was released around a week ago after serving half of his sentence of three years and four months for terror offences. He was under active police surveillance at the time of the attack on Streatham High Road which police believe to be an Islamist-related terrorist incident. Three people were injured but none are in a life-threatening condition. Scotland Yard said officers were searching addresses in South London and Bishop Stortford, Hertfordshire. We are confident that this is an isolated incident that has been contained. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the government would announce further plans for fundamental changes to the system for dealing with those convicted of terrorism offenses on Monday. 
He said the government had moved quickly to introduce measures strengthening its response to terrorism, including longer prison sentences and more money for police, following the attack at Fishmongers Hall near London Bridge in November. Jovic Burma, CNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. Somalia has declared a national emergency as large swarms of locusts spread across East Africa. Kath Dumaraos details why. Somalia has become the first country in the Horn of Africa to declare a locust infestation, sweeping the region as a national emergency. The ministry said the emergency declaration was made to focus efforts and raise funds because it was critical to contain the locust swarms before harvests are due in April. There are fears that the situation may not be brought under control before the harvest begins in April. Desert locusts are species of grasshopper that live largely solitary lives until a combination of conditions promote breeding and lead them to form massive swarms. The United Nations has released $10 million for aerial pesticide spraying in response to the worst locust outbreak. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization warned that the worst desert locust outbreak in decades has threatened the food security of Ethiopia and its neighboring East African countries. We are in a region where over 11 million people in the three countries are already uh, in uh, acute food insecurity. Uh, therefore, we need to make all possible effort to avoid uh, such a deterioration. We know that these locusts, the locusts that we see here, can create really massive uh, devastation, not only in terms of crop, but also in terms of pasture, and therefore affecting the livelihoods of the pastoralist communities. Uh, for that to happen, at this critical point, the only solution that works is aerial uh, spraying. There have been six major desert locust plagues in the 1900s, the last of which was in 1987-89. to The last significant surge was in 2003-2005. to Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Residents of small towns around Australia's capital, Canberra, have returned home to estimate the damage after bushfires tore through the area. However, the fires did not reach the capital's southern suburbs region as predicted by Australian Meteorological Department earlier. Nina Bascon will tell us why. Residents in small towns near Australia's capital returned home to discover what was lost on Sunday after bushfires fueled by strong winds and searing temperatures tore through the area. There were fears on Saturday that the blaze, fueled by temperatures and exceeding 40 degrees Celsius, could reach Canberra's southern suburbs, threatening homes and lives as they did in 2003 when fires destroyed almost 500 houses and led to four deaths. But containment lines supported by airdrops of fire retardant help keep the blaze back, even in the face of wild winds and elevated temperatures, which only fell to 26.7 degrees Celsius in the capital overnight, according to Australia's Bureau of Meteorology. We've just arrived here today and we obviously evacu evacuated yesterday and came back to check on our animals and we've just found one over there. She's badly burnt, so... We're just looking for any other animals we've got and seeing what we've got left of our property. On Sunday, bushfires had spread to more than 55,000 hectares, close to a quarter of the Australian Capital Territories, or ACT, entire landmass, leaving several properties destroyed. I've never seen fires move so quickly in this country before. Uh, the speed and the ferocity of the fires were unbelievable. Australia's devastating and prolonged bushfire season has killed 33 people and an estimated 1 billion native animals in September. About 2,500 homes have been destroyed and more than 11.7 million hectares of tinder dry bushland have been razed. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue, Australia. And those are the stories from around the globe. Back to you, Diego.
Thank you, R.L. Camilla, reporting live from Takatsuka, Japan. The final four that will fight it out in the semi-final round of the UNTV Cup Season 8 is complete. But a winning team in the quarterfinals fails to reach the next round of the League of Public Servants. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Two-time champion Gudishari Magis proved they have the heart of a champion after overcoming another winner-take-all match in the league's quarterfinals against PITC Global Graders 65-55. Warren Ibanez and Frederick Salamat led the Magis through outside shooting, dominating three-point area with five from Ibanez and four from Salamat. Ibanez with a total of 14 points and Salamat with 16 points were both hailed as the best players of the game. According to Ibanez, after suffering two consecutive losses in the quarterfinals, the team prepared well against PITC. Sinabi ko sa kanila, bumawi tayo, kailangan natin mag-step up. Kasi two losses, yun siguro nag-boost sa amin yun. Talagang uh, patay kung patay yung laro. Uh, medyo napag-aralan namin yung, una, yung first half nila, kaya nag-1-2-2 kami. Medyo doon na sila nahirapan. It's a heartbreaking loss. Judiciary, the only team that tainted the defending champion AFB Cavaliers record this season with eight wins and one loss, promised to prepare more especially in the defense department. Rod Basalio led the Global Traders with 19 points together with Hadi Porto who delivered 15 points and Aloiso Stapla who added 10 points. Agriculture Food Masters exits the league with a win against powerhouse NHA Builders in the first game that ended at 87-83. Best players of the game, Christian De Matera with 16 points and Henry Fernandez with 27 points say they gave their all to make their exit memorable. Despite getting eliminated, Coach Ron DeSanto says he is proud of his team's performance this season. I believe parang one win away kami going to the semis, no? sayang. Pero uh, importante na uh, nakarating. Mas malayo. It's better than last season. So, I'm uh, very proud of the boys. Uh, important, sabi ko nga, big achievement in quarters. Hindi ma kami nakarating ng semifinals. At least, naging maganda yung progression. NHA Builders will battle rookie team DNR Warriors in a best of three series in the semifinals. Meanwhile, PITC Global Traders and DA Foodmasters bid farewell to the season with a promise to bounce back next season with a more stronger team. Burger Daddy's UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Kuya Daniel Razon led the grand opening of Salute Restaurant in Quezon City. Coffee lovers can also enjoy a hot cup in the middle of an affordable buffet party. Mon Hokson tells us why. Are you ready for an all-you-can-eat buffet feast? Salute Restaurant has got you covered. From Brazilian food, European and Asian delicacies, you can find all of these at Salute. Kuya Daniel Razon led the grand opening of Salute Restaurant Cafe yesterday at Eaton Centuries in Quezon City. For only 649 pesos, everyone can now dig into all the delicious foods that Salute offers. Makatikim ang mga kapwa Pilipino ng pagkain pasok sa kanilang bulsa pero mas malasahan nila yung international dishes at siyempre yung mga pagkain pinagmamalaki sa Brazil maging sa ating bansa sa Pilipinas. Are you health conscious? 
Salud surely has all that fits your healthy diet. We still uh, live up to the expectation that ang salute is healthy and healthy. Lagi kaming merong uh, four to five dish na vegetarian, vegan, plant based, at sa mga low carbohydrates, mga nagkikito. Meron kami mga keto products na available sa restaurant. At meron din kami mga seafood sa mga mahilig sa seafood. If you don't have a big appetite, you can still enjoy the 1 peso per gram meal and will just pay for what you want to eat. Diners enjoyed all the dishes at Salute's grand opening yesterday. Unlike nun sa ibang mga buffet, dito talaga malinamnam siya and sobrang juicy ng mga food. And good news to coffee lovers. Meron na po tayo dito din station ng Daniels. So yung mga beverage and coffee and drinks ng Daniels ay pwede nyo din matikman dito po sa Salute Centrics. Kaya pasyal na po kayo dito and try it out. Ayaw ko magsabi tungkol sa food kung paano natin gina-judge yung panlasa natin. But mas mabuti po talaga na kayo po sa sarili nyo ang tumikip para sabi nyo kung sulit ba o hindi. Salut Restaurant is located at Eton Centris in Quezon City and opens from 11 in the morning up to 11 in the evening every day. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And those are the reasons behind the news. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. I am William P. And I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. We want to reiterate that there is no evidence of any local transmission in the Philippines or among Filipinos at this point of time. The only two positives that we have identified here in the Philippines were among the two travelers who came from Wuhan. We have oriented more than 40 hospitals in Quezon City, private and uh, public hospitals, on the triaging system ng, ng Department of Health. Uh, alam nila paano i, kung kailangan i-conduct ang pasyente o i-transfer yung pasyente to a DOH hospital, uh, ready na po tayo para doon. So, tutulong ang PNP, but we're just presenting na meron kaming ganitong pwersa whom they can use. No? Actually, hindi naman to talaga pang ganitong emergency na may, may sakit. Ano? But this is for chemical warfare. But equally, uh, they are protected. No? So, they can be used. Nilalatag lang namin na meron kaming capability na ganito and ready to be deployed at any time. I'm um, with my two kids and husband. It's very difficult here. And uh, our flight was cancelled. We really want to go back home. Mas deadly pa sa coronavirus yung nangyayaring discrimination at xenophobia. Yung China bashing, Chinese bashing, tapos ilalahat mo. Ay papano kung yung Pinoy ay eh, maputi at singkit, kababayan mo pala, tapos uh, kung ibuli mo, di ba? Sabi ko siguro, hindi naman discrimination Chinese. Uh, dahil because Chinese sila, dahil because the virus originated from China, so they just want to protect themselves. Ayaw nilang eh, pasahero na makahawa daw sila. 